Hey guys, what's going on? Josh here from Polymathics, the YouTube channel that helps you become a modern day renaissance man. And today we are going to continue our series on the monomyth, also known as the hero's journey, also known as the fool's journey. Now, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, stop right now, go check some of my other videos. I did a basic overview of the monomyth where I go over the basics and give you a very broad scope, broad view of what the monomyth is. And, and then we've already covered the separation phase. The next few videos that we're going to do is going to touch on what's called the initiation phase or act. And today's video in particular, we're going to talk about the purpose of the initiation phase. Then in later videos, we'll touch on each of the steps, and then we'll talk about some of the characters and give some examples. But when you think about the initiation phase of the monomyth, you have to think, what does the initiation mean? Where did Joseph Campbell pull this word from? Why would he call it that? Well, he was comparing mythologies from around the world. Not only that, though, Joseph Campbell was especially early in his career, focused very deeply on Native American tribes and cultures and their traditions. And even in later in his life, he would look at other traditions from around the world, Aborigines every, everywhere. And what he found was there were always these rituals, particularly that revolved around a young child transitioning from adolescence to adulthood. Most of these were revolved around how a boy was to become a hunter and go out into the world. And so there's, there's an initiation there. There's an initiation ritual because the psychology of a boy who has spent most of his time living in the safe confines of the tribe with his mother and the elders and the rest of the kids, that's a safety net. And as he transitions into adolescence and into adulthood, he's becoming a man. And now he has to go out with the hunters. He has to go into this dark jungle or forest and look for the and, and face monsters and challenges and be away from the safety net and be independent of the tribe in some circumstances to in order to bring back that which they need the most, which is food, which is sustenance, which is power. And when we look at stories both from antiquity all the way up until contemporary stories of today. What we see is that same theme of a hero, someone who leaves the normal world, goes out into the special world, and gets the power or the, the reward or the boon and brings it back to the people. The initiation phase in a tribe is where you take the child, the adolescent, and you do a physical demonstration, a ritual that connects deeply, symb sym symbolically with their subconscious so that they can identify that there's a change being made. And just a side note, a, a lot of psychologists nowadays are attributing some of the issues that teenagers have with becoming adults they attribute it to the fact that over time, we, especially Westerners, have lost this sense of ritual and tradition and custom. And so they never get this firm line that they see that they're crossing so that psychologically they feel as though they have become an adult. Even though they may have all the tools necessary both physically and mentally, to be an adult. The ritual 
is an outward expression to show the child, to make the build the confidence in the child to say, you are officially an adult. When we look at the rituals that we have nowadays for initiation, it's it's in the form of graduations. So nowadays there's graduations from kindergarten and first grade. And it's ridiculous, but it's a sign to the child that they have successfully conquered this part of their journey and that they're going to a new phase, the next step. And those rituals continue throughout their life, all the way through college. And a lot of times, even in certain companies, they'll have different rituals that help. And those normally are the companies that do well. Even in the military, there's the whole basic training is like this prolonged initiation ritual to tear the recruit down to where they feel like a maggot and then build them back up to where they feel like they're a soldier and they can take on the world. So that is the importance of the initiation phase. That is the purpose, is that when you're writing about your hero, you want them to go through a series of tests and challenges that's going to prove them worthy, both to the audience and to the hero themselves, that they are capable of fulfilling the quest of achieving the goal and completing the journey. One of the biggest things that we see, one of the, one of the great concepts that Joseph Campbell identified early on is that not all heroes go through the full initiation phase. And a lot of times this is the thief hero. Prometheus is the perfect example of this, where you have this hero who steals fire from the gods, the fire being the power or the boon, the reward, and he brings it down to earth to the people so that, so that man can have that godlike power. And because of this, he's punished by the gods. Why? It's a tragic hero because he never learn for himself. He never proved to both himself and the gods that he was worthy to have that power. And so that is, the, that is one of the major lessons that we learn from Prometheus. However, we see this time and time again in other heroes as well. Some of them to a greater degree and some of them to a lesser degree. Another one that comes to my mind is Giglamesh, who he, he and Enkidu go into the palace of the gods, steal one of their ships or chariots, fly across the ocean, find out where the secret of longevity is, and then dive deep into the water to get this plant. And then as they go back to give this gift to the world, they, they lose it. The gods steal it back from them. And it's this sense, one, the sense is it's not so much where you start from or where you end up, but the journey itself and how you changed and how you learned more about yourself. But the other part is, was the individual worthy to achieve the goal? Some stories, and maybe your story, the answer will be no. Maybe they are a tragic hero like Prometheus in that sense. Or on the other hand, maybe they achieve all of the goals that they need to along their journey and they are proven worthy. The, one of the things that you'll notice in many stories is that the hero will fail sometimes and then succeed others. Or they'll fail by doing that which the writer believes is wrong, but maybe his society believes is right, the, the heroes. And then through those quote-unquote failures, which really aren't failures, he then actually learns the steps of what the writer believes is the correct way, the correct method of doing things. So 
I believe that is <coughs> good enough for the purpose. The purpose is to initiate your hero. Oh, there is. There's one last thing I wanted to talk about. The mythic structure has been criticized by many, particularly in Hollywood, that it's too episodic. It, it goes on for too long. And it's, to be quite frankly, it's a very true criticism. The middle part of a mythology can become very episodic and, and, and seem long. So if you are particularly writing on a platform that is is supposed to be condensed and short, you have a couple different options. John Truby, who is a screenwriter that has reviewed thousands of scripts and gives great advice on screenwriting for Hollywood, has said that you want to take the basic concepts of myth and mix them with other genres in order to make a more cohesive story. So for example, in a lot of myth stories, the, the hero faces threshold guardians, which are like ogres, and then they face witches, and then they face warlocks, and all these different things. And there's no cohesiveness because they're not part of the same faction or army. They believe in different things. To create more cohesiveness, you want to pull from a genre like what we see a lot now is superhero genre, where you have superhero faction versus the supervillain faction. And when you do it like that, it's a little bit more cohesive because sometimes it can be the same supervillain that they're facing each time, or it can be a faction that is representing symbolically the same antagonistic force. If you want to hear more about that, I highly suggest that you pick up John Truby's book, pardon me, The Anatomy of Story, or check out some of his videos on YouTube. The, so it can be episodic, but we've also seen in several Hollywood blockbusters that sometimes episodic works just fine. For example, Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit, and Star Wars are all episodic. But the key there is that you start off from a low level and you keep raising the stakes. And as you raise the stakes, the heroes face different opponents and foes, but the stakes keep getting raised and raised and raised. And it, because the tension is heightened and suspense is heightened, the audience can stay engaged. So I hope that's been helpful and informative. And if you wanna hear more, please like, share, and subscribe and I will catch you in our next video. Take it easy.